episode three of the WNBL show. Hello, Sarah Blitzovs. You came back. Oh, Megan Husswaite, I came back. Can you believe it? I can. I can. <laughs> Thank you for coming because you are off to Townsville for the game of the week. Wednesday night, Southside and Townsville, two undefeated teams going at it. Can't wait for that Wednesday night hoops. Yes, massive game. Looking forward to um, getting out of this cold Melbourne weather right now and entering some 30 degree temperatures. Oh, me too. Bring on the humidity. Yes. <laughs> the humidity. We love humidity. <laughs> Lots coming up today on the show. We have our first guest of the Signet WNBL season, Amy Atwell, fresh from being in the team of the week, will join us from Perth Link. She had a fabulous performance in Perth's first W of the season. Yeah, big time performance by Amy Atwell. 21 points through rounds three assists against Canberra, as you do. Um, and being a young player and coming out and doing her things, you know, we're excited to chat to her. It will be great to chat to her. But let's reflect on the round that was in round two. We go back, well, a week ago. These Wednesday games make the weeks long but glorious. But we do have three undefeated teams so far. So Bendigo, Southside, Townsville. What are your thoughts? We know that Southside had big um, expectations on them going into this season, but maybe Bendigo and Townsville could be the surprise packet so far. Yeah, exactly right. I think what's super exciting about us three being undefeated is that we are yet to play each other. And like you said, we've got Townsville this weekend. So one of those teams are going to be not undefeated anymore. Um, But yeah, all three teams I feel like have clicked really well and you can see it on court. They're all gelling. They're playing really well as a team and, um, you know, playing some very good basketballs. So yeah, going to be tough going into the future, but great for WNBA. Great for the Signet WNBL. I love that the three teams are playing different styles of basketball. Each sort of has a different story. So all have had some changes over the off season, a new coach in Kennedy at Bendigo, but then two of the more experienced coaches in this league in Shannon Seabom and also your coach, Cheryl Chambers. So we'll dig into that a little bit more as the show goes on. But let's uh, rewind back to last Wednesday night. It was game one of the Michelle Teams Cup, Southside Flyers, Melbourne boomers and as you felt predicted you know the feeling you had deep inside you was that the flies were going to get the win and that it was, was correct <laughs> you, <laughs> gotta trust my gut feeling um unreal game to be a part of yet again the flies atmosphere with a hint of boomers atmosphere throughout the stadium it was unreal um super great for women's basketball and what a great game to be a part of and be able to play too and just to get that win you know deep down the side it was quite nice may Sweet. I add Sweet. We're sweet. Want to talk about Kayla Thornton because she's one of two imports in this league that has started their debut season with back to back double doubles. We spoke about her last week, but she couldn't have fitted in any better at the Flyers. Yeah, she's doing great for us. I think what's an added bonus and something that I love about her is defensively she's phenomenal too. So we threw on Tiff Mitchell and, um, you know, I feel like she got the job done against Tiff as well and just great team defense too, but just, just a great chick, you know, can, can score, can defend, can rebound and, you know, is a, is a good human too. So really happy to have her in the league and yeah, she's out there and just balling out. We mentioned defense last week after round one. There was a <laughs> lot, of, didn't we? We chanted it. There was a lot more of that played at the weekend, particularly in this game. It was a ten point margin, but sixty seven fifty seven. The final scores was that something um, that you guys really zeroed in on going into this game, knowing that the Boomers, you know, can score big too offensively. Yeah, absolutely, and the Boomers were coming off a hundred point game as well, so we knew that was going to be the key to winning. Um, obviously, there. They have massive offensive scoring power and we had to play defense and we did. Finally, it was lovely, you know, round two playing D. Um, onwards and upwards from here. Now we've just got to learn how to box out, but we're getting there. <laughs> One week at a time. <laughs> yeah. Now, speaking of imports, having a huge influence on the league so far, Tiana Hawkins is lighting it up at Townsville. We'll talk a bit more about your game against the Fire shortly, but 33 points. So it was the biggest output scoring wise of the weekend, 13 of 20, 10 boards and two assist. Uh, they've found one, haven't they, they at Townsville? Have found one. She was playing like a guard as well. Yeah, um, big just, guard. Yeah, you could, big guard, big guard <laughs> things. You could see she was in the zone that game. Um, everything looked easy to her. She was scoring inside, outside and just, you know, putting on a show. So experienced, isn't she? Very experienced. She? I so, mean, how many years has she been playing for now? I can maybe eight seasons yeah. with the Mystics, yeah. played with Leilani Mitchell, yeah. uh, Lay's a huge fan of her. Um, they've done very well. 
with her. And you mentioned Carly Samuelson last week yes. too. And she was doing what Blicky predicted. What? what is with me? You know, maybe I've got a bit of, um, is it Nostradamus in me? Yeah. yeah. Nostradamus. Nostral- <laughs> Nostradamus. Nostradamus. Yeah. Um, I keep saying things and it, it happens. So flies for the win against Townsville by 30 points. Oh, well, we'll get to that <laughs> a little bit later, Sarah Blitzabs. But four players averaging 10 or more rebounds per game so far. Annalie Maley, Tiana Hawkins, Dakia Cohen and Kayla George. What a mix of players. I think that showcases the WNBL more than anything. You've got a reigning MVP, you've got a vet and an Opal in Kayla, and then you've got two first season imports in um, Townsville and also Canberra. Yeah, exactly right. And I think the common theme in, in amongst those four players is just aggression and the want and desire to go after it. You can see all these players do that and it shows. Um, I would love my name up in those lights soon, so hopefully I can get on the boards a bit more and get up in there as well. Come on, Blicky. <laughs> no, put some effort in, Blicky. What are you doing? Box out. <laughs> uh, we mentioned Bendigo being undefeated so far. We also touched on Anna Lee, the MVP of last year, teaming up with her previous MVP in KG23. They're proving to be a wonderful combination at the Spirit, who had a win uh, 77-57 over Sydney. So we mentioned it last week it was Sydney's first game. Unfortunately, it, it wasn't the performance the Flames would have been looking for in no. what was their round one. Exactly right. Um, very low scoring for Sydney, which is surprising because there are a lot of scorers on that team. But I think it's for them, you know, it was their round one um, where Bendigo had played. I think that was their third game too. So um, maybe nerves came through on that one. You never know. Um, and again, it comes down to probably how teams gel or how they, you know, go together as a team. And it's probably something that they haven't really clicked with yet. So I'm sure we'll see them all coming up in a about, I mean, Shyla had 20 points still, mm. but Tiana only had two. So I guess it's just trying to find the groove on how they play together. And then they've got two imports settling in as well. Exactly so, right. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Everyone else has had a head start when you think that some teams have played three games already. Yes. Now let's move on. The Boomers raised their championship banner at the State Sports Centre, the Boombox, on Sunday. They had a narrow win, a four-point win over Adelaide. Let's talk about the Boomers before we get to the Lightning, but um, you've raised the banner before after Southside won the title. It's a very special moment being able to do that in front of your family, your friends, and most importantly, your fans. Yeah, exactly right. And um, I think it just helps with momentum leading into the season too, and it's something that you want to win again. You see that go up there and you want that feeling again. And for them to do it, I think it was in front of 3,000 people too, pretty much a sold-out crowd awesome atmosphere. You know, women's basketball, it's honestly picked up so much momentum from the whole Opals campaign, I would say. And, you know, we're thriving at the moment. So great to see them do that. Again, that's something I want to be able to do with the Flyers again. And um, yeah, hopefully that can happen, but it must have been a nice feeling for them. Put that on your vision board. Tiff yes. Mitchell, a huge round from her. Obviously, she was big in the loss to the Flyers, huge again on Sunday. She's come back, if possible, bigger and better from her debut WNBL championship season. Yeah, thriving, absolutely full of confidence right now. And when you're a confident basketball player, you're hard to stop. And that comes along with talent too. She's very talented. So, Well, another team that is talented is Adelaide. They have had three losses to start the season all by under 10 points, but they are playing some serious basketball. They just haven't been able to get the reward. They haven't. And what I've found with watching Adelaide play, their last quarters have always brought it back. So they have the heart and they have the desire to win. It's there, but they just got to figure out how to put that together. Um, but then Lauren Mansfield coming out in Townsville and hitting four threes in the last quarter, as you do, Lauren Mansfield. <laughs> it was Lauren Mansfield things, wasn't it? It was. She Some must have heard the commentator. She must have heard the commentator say at the five minute mark that Adelaide were done and dusted when they were down by twenty. <laughs> yeah, there was talk about putting the bench on, wasn't there? Yeah. Because it was the first leg of a double header, um, right off Adelaide and a coach. Uh, and a team, sorry, coached by Nat Hurst at your peril. Um, Izzy Borlace, huge again against Melbourne. Unfortunately, Steph Talbot, the skipper, um, has gone down with an injury. Hopefully it'll only be a few weeks. It makes things a bit tough for Adelaide, but they've got to take confidence out of the fact that They've been so close against three really good teams to start the season and a win is around the corner. Yeah, exactly right. And they have a lot of other players that are great with scoring as well. So, But it is a big loss with Steph. Um, Like you said, I really hope she's not out for too long. She just brings that energy and that experience that every team needs. So, But like you said... um, Izzy Borlase, she's coming out and balling out too and no fear. I love oh, watching so that from good. the young gun. Yeah, so, so good. they're doing well. Okay, let's get what caught your eye for round two. 
what caught your attention, Sarah Blitzer? Um, well, we've touched on a fair few, but I think from Perth, uh, Amy Atwell and Chloe Bibby, you know, they're two of the younger girls into their first season. I mean, Chloe's played with Danny Nong, but I'm going to technically say this is her proper first season as well. And both coming out with 21 and 20 points and just playing confidently, I think it's really good for Perth. Did you play with Chloe at Danny Nong? I did, yes. yes. She would have been yes. a baby. Yeah, she was a little baby yeah. right before college, yeah. Aww. So they've both come in and they're, you know, taking this league under their wing and doing things with it, so proud of them. We'll talk to Amy coming up, but at one point, um, I think it was in the first quarter, her and Sammy Whitcomb had out scored Canberra between them. So they really got Perth off to a huge start after what had been a disappointing beginning of the season for the grand finalists from last season. But we will talk to Amy about that shortly. What caught my eye was Shanice Swain from the UC Capitals. We know the Caps have been hit hard by injury. So Gemma Potter out for the season, Jade Melbourne sideline, but I think back jogging this week. So um, good luck to the goat of humans. <laughs> Jade <laughs> Melbourne. The she- goat of humans. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> as she makes her her return. But Shanice Swain, she's got a few opportunities over the last couple of years, you know, minutes here and there amongst really good Canberra teams. She's been thrown into the starting lineup and she's really impressed. And you can tell that she's got the backing and the confidence of um, coach Kristen Veal. So um, Shanice had 12, 5 and 3, a good stat line for a good young yeah. player coming through. So I guess with injuries and crisis brings opportunity and I'm really excited to see Shanice continue yeah. to flourish. Absolutely. She's a great player and it's so exciting for Australian basketball that we have all these young ones that we're constantly talking about and they're coming up in the ranks too. But I I remember watching her play against um, Japan for the Emerging Opals and I was really, you know, taken aback by her. I thought, oh, she's got some grit about her and she's going to be super good and you know, it's proving. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said, these players are putting themselves up there in the WNBL in the opening couple of weeks and they're just migrating into the conversation. We're not having to search for the young stars coming through. They are in the conversation. So looking forward to seeing what they continue to Absolutely. produce. Absolutely. It's making me a bit nervous about my Australian spot, actually. <laughs> At age, what are you, 29? 29. Yeah, you old duck. I'm going to start working harder now, don't I? <laughs> Boxing out yes. and rebounds. Get on yes. the rebound count. Um, Blinky, let's turn our focus now to round three of the Signet WNBL. My gosh, the season is already flying. Yes. And and told the Flyers, yeah. uh, you're in action uh, Wednesday night, uh, ESPN game, you head up to Townsville to take on the five, two undefeated teams. And uh, it's going to be hot, not just the weather. <laughs> oh, sizzling. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, geez, we love a Wednesday night game, don't yeah. we? I'm starting to get used to it. Yep, you know, I don't mind are. a little midweek game. Yep. Have the weekend off. We'll take yeah. that. Uh, I'm going to pick our Flyers by 30. Oh, 30 <laughs> seems, um, why 30, Blicky? Because... What I say in here seems to come true, yeah. so I'm trying to just say it out into the universe. I don't Nostradamus vibes. <laughs> Nostradamus. I don't <laughs> think it will be 30 points. I'm super looking forward to this game. So many great matchups. Just a little butt hurt by that, but that's fine. It won't be 30 points. That's fair. Um, so many matchups I'm looking forward to, but particularly the imports as we've touched on already. Kayla Thornton, Tiana Hawkins. That's going to be super. Yeah, I think exactly what we were saying before, you know, we're wrapping up Kayla, we're wrapping up Tiana, and now they get to battle it out against each other as well. So I might be playing the game and sitting back and watching any popcorn at the same time. <laughs> I'll be doing that on the <laughs> sideline for ESPN. Um, looking forward to the guard matchup too. Take me through how you go about sort of curbing the influence of Laura Nicholson, Steph Reed, and Courtney Woods. Yeah. Um, also, all three can play defense really well and they're very aggressive players too. So, um, and have all played with each other for a while mm. too. And in the off season, yeah, playing together. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. So, they're a great little combination. Um, and hopefully, the word little is going to be our advantage as well. You guys are big, though, aren't you? And massive. Big, tall, strong girls. And that is something that Townsville are likely to miss this week with Zatina Okuso hurting her foot in a warm-up last yes. week. So wishing Z all the best, mm. but they may be without her on Wednesday night. But as you said, midweek hoops, we love that. ESPN Wednesday night, bring that on. Let's have a look at Perth and Sydney now. Perth have a bit of momentum after that big win over the Caps last weekend. Sydney are searching for their first victory and they've got a big weekend because it's a double header for them. What are you expecting from this game, Blicky? Yeah, this is going to be a great game. Exactly what you said. Perth are firing at the moment and they're going to try and keep that going, but Sydney will be angry. And so mm. as soon as they click, they're going to be tough. Um, I'm going to still go for Sydney. I really? think 
Oh gosh, now I don't know. When you no, say no, really, and- no, I like that. Take take me through the tip though, because again, talking about guard battles. Yes, Whitcomb, Atwell, Heel, Mangakar here. Yeah, some great matchups coming through. Yeah, now that I say this, I'm not sure because Perth are gelling well as a team again, just having those extra games played over Sydney. Um, but I just know that Sydney could light it up whenever, and yeah. maybe. Being angry, I know that when I've played not a great game or the team's played not a great game, you want to come out firing next. So all I know is that I'm happy to not play Sydney yet. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Now, it reminds me too, late in the season last year, Perth had just got back home after being in Ballarat. They were on fire. Sydney went over there with injuries. They had two DPs in the starting five and they knocked off Perth. So I think... They it's a different group, different season, but I think they've got the knowledge that they can go over to Perth and have their bats up against the wall and still come home with the results. So I'm really fascinated to see that game. Can't wait for that. And I'm loving the Perth home games, especially when there's double headers because it's like two games and Perth, you know, a bit of a late game before, a yeah. bit of a treat before bed. Yeah, a little Perth treat league. before bed. Little treat before bed. <laughs> um, so looking forward to that game as we move on to the, what will be the second leg of Sydney's weekend, Adelaide taking on Sydney. Now, Sydney may already have their first win. We know Adelaide are gunning for their first. So much on the line here. There's so much. Um, it's so unpredictable right now. This is very hard to tip, but I think Adelaide coming out as well, not having won yet, they're going to be feeling the same. Again, that's going to be another great game. The whole league comes with great games. It's, it's super great to watch. But maybe Adelaide Lightning this time, yeah. you know? Maybe Mansfield's like, if I can hit four threes in the last quarter, I could probably hit 16 for the whole game. Right. Quick math. <laughs> <laughs> Quick math. Uh, no <laughs> Talbot, it means opportunity for other players. We spoke about injuries and what that means for the cap. So do we see an Abby Cabillo get some more time? Marina Whittle might get some more um, yeah. responsibility on her shoulders. They're all up to the task. Um, and I think Nat Hurst is going to get them over the line here in her first career coaching win. And is this what we were speaking about last week? Is Nat Hurst going to have to suit up because Talbot is out? <laughs> Maybe it's her time oh, yeah. to shine. She's in, like Veely, she's in very good shape. Yes. I think they've still got it. You don't lose those uh, those point yeah. guard smarts, but that is going to be a terrific game. And then we finish off on Sunday. Boomers are back at home at the Boombox, playing host to the UC Capitals. Melbourne go in overwhelming favourites given the cap situation. But um, the Caps were able to get the margin back a bit um, last round. So, you know, they've still got some experience in that side. They've got Brit Smart, they've got Bunce, they've got Emily Whittle Harmon, and they've got some young guns. So, never say never, but you'd have to think looking at the ladder right now, Melbourne go in hot faves. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick Melbourne for this one for sure. But like you said, you never say never. They've got players that have been in this league for a while and they know how to play. So, they put that together with their nice mix of youth. You know, that will hurt a few teams Mm. this year. I really see that happening. And especially when there isn't that expectation on them. Yes. There's no pressure pressure. on them because Mm. they've got injuries. Um, They will definitely be boosted by the return of Jade Melbourne, hopefully in a few weeks. But it's a great learning curve for this group. And um, under Kristen Veal, who's really fostered a lot of the young talent through the COE that we're seeing around the country at the moment, Shanice, Jade, Izzy Borlace um, have all come through under Veal's tutelage. So the Caps are in good hands with her at the helm. Exactly right. And this might be a team to watch in maybe two or three years' time as well when they've played together for a while. Yeah, absolutely. That is our preview of Signet WNBL Round 3. Exceptional work, Megzi. Way to get through it. Well, Blicky, it's time to welcome our very first guest to the WNBL show this season. We've gone to the top. Someone in the team of the week. She led Perth to their first win of the season at the weekend. And it's a very big hello to Amy Atwell. Welcome to the show. Hey, Ames. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Now, it must be a good feeling this week after getting that first W. It had been a little bit of a tricky start for the Lynx. Yeah, definitely. Um, we struggled a bit round one, which was kind of to be, to be expected. It was the first time we were really together um, as a whole team, but definitely feels good to finally get that first one off. How did it feel for you to play your best WNBL game to date? Three-game career so far, but, hey, it was a good... <laughs> Good performance. Did, did it feel good out there? Are you starting to get a bit of flow? Yeah, definitely. I just think the chemistry was better as an overall team as well and um, certainly helps when we're all kind of hitting shots and stuff like that and it definitely helps when you have someone like Lauren Scherf who's just going to find you wherever you are. 
Tell us a bit about the dynamic of the team. I'm sure when you agree to sign with Perth, and we'll talk about that a bit later, but just the prospect of playing alongside Sammy Whitcomb, I'm sure, is um, pretty enticing. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, she's a legend and she kind of came to Perth and has built her career up from the NBL One League and has gone and done amazing things and has had an amazing career and will continue to do so. And just that experience, even at the WNBA level and the, the two championships she's won, is just something that I couldn't pass up. Now, Amy, um, obviously being new in this league, is there a player that you're super excited to match up, play against, or even a team that you're excited to play against? Um, I mean, obviously, the obvious one is Lauren Jackson, South Side Flies. Um, <laughs> obviously, grew up watching her, and just to be able to share the call with her is going to be an unreal feeling. Um, other than that, it's kind of just. I'm excited to play every week. Can you believe that LJ is playing? Because, yeah, exactly, your face says it all. Like you you would have grown up watching her and then the way that, you know, everyone's paths have sort of taken them, that you're back playing in the WNBL for your home state and here she is returning to basketball at age 41. You're going to play against her. Right. It's it's crazy and it's, yeah, I you can't even, you can't even describe it. Um, never thought this day would come. Um, but yeah, it's super exciting and just, it's great for the league and for women's basketball around Australia. Vision this, you end up getting the ball out on the wing. Lauren Jackson has switched on to you. What are you doing next? Passing the ball. (laughs) (laughs) Great question. Intimidation. (laughs) That's why we have LJ on our team. (laughs) (laughs) Off to Sammy Whitcomb. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now, you are a WA girl. I remember Ryan Patrick, your coach, telling me pre-season and he's been at the Lynx for a while as an assistant coach and now in his uh, third, fourth season as, as head coach. Um, you've been on the radar for, for a long time. So how did it come to fruition that you'd come home to Perth and play for your home state in the WNBL? Um, yeah, well, it kind of all happened pretty quickly. He was he had mentioned that once I started talking, he was waiting till I finished my college career and uh, I kind of closed that chapter of my life to reach out. Um, and it was, I was in LA, I was having chats with my agent, obviously, um, a whole bunch of teams were getting in contact. And then I just got a text from Ryan was like, Hey, we'd love to have a chat. Um, and then it was like the next week or two, it was like, okay, well, Perth is a real option here. And, um, if I have the chance to come home, then I'd be silly to pass up on it, I think. What's it like to finally play in front of family and friends after so long? And when was the last time you played in front of them? So I was lucky enough that my sister, mum and dad came out in March this last year to Hawaii to watch my senior night at college. Um, But before that had been two, two and a half years um, since I played in front of any any of them. Um, But to have be able to have my grandparents, school friends, old basketball teammates um, come to the first couple games already is just an unreal feeling. And obviously getting a taste with the WNBA with the LA Sparks this year, is um, heading back over to the States still big on your mind or is Europe maybe staying in Australia? What are, what are your thoughts going ahead? Right now I'm just kind of trying to take it one step at a time, uh, see how this season goes, put my whole focus into this season and having the best season I can um, individually and as a team with Perth. Um, but definitely getting over to the back to the States um, is definitely high on the priority list and something I definitely want to achieve. So on reflection, can you talk us through being drafted this year in the WNBA and then starting for the Sparks? Because that is just incredible, wild, magical, dreams come true. Yeah, it was um, It was nuts. It was like the week or two leading up to the draft, it was like, okay, um, I'm one of like a hundred and something girls on this list that, and there's like 36 that are going to get taken on draft night. I'm like, what are the chances of that really happening? And then kind of as it got closer and closer – um, I was talking to my agent. I was like, okay, this is a real possibility. And then I was like, okay, I better have some, like get some friends together to watch the draft. So if anything does happen, at least I'm not sitting there alone in my room. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was an unreal feeling being surrounded by uh, some of my closest teammates and closest friends and having my name called out um, on national TV. It was just like, did that really just happen? <laughs> um, and then obviously two days later, I was flying out to LA starting training camp. Um, with some of the biggest names in women's basketball over there, the Neko Guma Keys, um, stuff like that. It was just a whirlwind and it was like I had to pinch myself like, wait, am I really here? Um, and then come starting, come opening night against defending champs in Chicago, uh, 
Fish was like, yeah, Amy, you're going to start tonight. And I was like, um, excuse me? <laughs> so, yeah, it was just an unreal opportunity and something I'll never uh, forget about and never um, take for granted kind of thing. Being drafted to the WNBA or, or signed is one thing. To get your first minutes is another. But how do you – garner that self-confidence and belief to go out there and start when you are playing with and against some of the best ever in women's basketball. And I think as women, we all have imposter syndrome at different times and often it's not warranted. But how how did you garner that confidence to just go out there and play your game? It was a little bit of like kind of two mindsets I had. First one was everything I've done all the hard work I've put in has led me here. Like I'm here for a reason. I got drafted for a reason. Somebody saw something in me. I made this team. I started for a reason. Um, and the other side of it was I was just someone out of uh, a mid-major in Hawaii. Wasn't meant to get drafted. Not many people expected me to be there. So kind of had nothing to lose at the same time. So it was like, one, I've done the hard work to, to be here and someone's believed in me. And two, I have nothing to lose at this point. So I love that mindset. Yeah. And I think it's such an Aussie approach as well that you know got nothing to lose but also backing yourself in that you're there for a reason um talk to us a bit about your college career and I'm more interested to know how it shaped you as a person rather than a basketballer yeah well it was a long one I was over in Hawaii for six years with uh, a red shirt year with some injuries and then COVID happened um off the court I just like grew so much as a person having to move halfway across the world at 18 years old on your own is already going to kind of make you grow up um, very quickly. (laughs) Um, So obviously just that aspect of it shaped my, shaped who I am and kind of made me grow. And I would, at the time um, I wasn't too keen on moving halfway across the world and um, kind of starting a new life almost and definitely struggled with that at first, but looking back on it, it's one of the best decisions I ever made. And I'm super happy with my coaches and parents and stuff back here that kind of pushed me to go. So do you see Hawaii as your second home and you think you'll try and get back at some stage? Yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of my best friends are over there. I think everyone kind of knows that – everyone that's gone to college basketball knows that you make some of your best friends over there because you go through literally everything together. <laughs> um, so some of my best friends still live over there. I'm still very close with the coaching staff. Um, so it is kind of home away from home and we'll definitely get over there any chance I get. Being home amongst family, friends, in your home city, I know you love the beach, all these sort of factors, do you think it sort of presents a great environment to really um, continue to develop your game and, and, yeah, soar, I guess? Yeah, well, that was definitely something that went into my decision of coming home and playing for Perth in the first place was just familiar environment. I'm going to have everything in my corner I need to kind of get take my basketball career to the next step and use this time to get as good as I can get basically. Um, And just have that, that support system around me, my friends, my family, um, kind of familiar with the the ins and outs, I guess. um, And kind of just not have to worry about the environmental part of basketball. So what is life like for you without basketball right now? Coffee shops, beach, take us through your daily routine. Yeah, well, I'm not actually much of a coffee drinker. So in the morning, I try to get up and go either do some sort of workout lift or shooting, um, and then I'll come back and make some lunch. We normally train afternoons, um, but if we do train in the mornings, I try to get to the beach in the afternoons. My sister has a border collie, a very cute border collie, so any chance I get, I'll go walk her or grab her and take her to the beach and um, stuff like that. I love this life for you, Amy Atwell. I think you could. I think we can twist your arm on the coffee, though. Uh, I've tr- listen. I've tried to twist my own arm. I was over there and uh, <laughs> oh, okay, I'll take that. <laughs> what is wrong with me? I'm 24 years old. I don't like coffee. Everyone's told me for the last six years it's okay. Once you hit 20, you'll like it. Once you hit 22, you'll like it. Once you once you get once you start working, you'll like it. Um, but I don't know. I just can't get over the the taste, and it just does funny things to my stomach. So <laughs> you have to start slowly, though. You've got to start on the mockers. Have you tried the mockers? Oh, I've tried the mockers, and I've I can drink it. So, like, if I have a mocker, I can probably get, like, halfway through and then I'm just like, no. Nah. You haven't spent much time in Melbourne, so I think we can pull some arms here, Blicky, and when um, Amy gets to Melbourne at some stage, we'll get her onto some good coffee. In saying that, though, I think if you're not a coffee drinker, you are not a coffee drinker. It doesn't change. Oh, I'm not. See? I'm, 
No, no I, I think you. I think when you like discover that you're not into it, you're not into it. You can't do it. I'm. I'm just not prepared to give up hope on it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is your new mission for the rest yeah. of the season. <laughs> I'm going to put it on my vision built board with my goals for 2023. Get Amy out while drinking coffee. Um, New Year's I'm, resolution? Yeah, New Year's resolution. I think we can do it. Speaking of goals, as, as we wrap up, Amy, I've got an Opal here with me, an Olympian, a World Cup uh, bronze medalist. Do you have aspirations to play for the Opals? Oh, 100%. I think that's that was kind of the first thing. That was the dream as a little kid when I first picked up a basketball. Um, I've kind of said this before, the WNBA was great and I'm really experienced, but that was like, that was never day one goal. That was kind of just an extra perk that happens along the way. And now I've obviously changed my goals and I want to get back there. But like growing up as a little girl, first time I picked up a basketball, I was like, I want to play for Australia. That was the the ideal end goal. And that's how it was, that is somewhere I'm hoping to get to. That's the answer we were looking for. Uh, It's been so great to chat to you, Amy. We're so wrapped to have you in this league. I think it's a real feather in the cap of the Signet WNBL to have a a person and player of your calibre and experience playing in this league for the first time. Thank you so much for joining us on the WNBL show and we wish you and the Perth Lynx all the best for the rest of the season. Thank you, guys. It was uh, a pleasure being on you. Great to have our first guest of the season on the WNBL show. I love Amy Atwell. She's a great human. She is a great human. Going to do big things in the league this season and beyond. Now, Sarah Blitzarves, the highlight of the show last week, well, certainly on social media, was your spotty list and your songs. You got a great edit. Have you got some music for us this week heading into a road trip? Do I have some great music for you this week, Megsy? Yes. This is my favourite segment. And I said I wasn't going to come back unless I got this segment in. Diva. <laughs> High maintenance, I know. But we're here and we have decided to throw it back a little bit. Again, these are all songs I'm listening to right now quite a lot. Mm-hmm. But it just happens to be a little old school at the moment. So we're going to start up with number one, Dreams by the Cranberries exceptional work. Great tune. Mm-hmm. Um, I would sing it for you, but you don't want to hear that. You could give us a little line. It's totally fine, but definitely blasting it in the car kind of music vibes. On, on the way to the airport vibes. Exactly right. Yeah. Uh, number two, a very chilled vibey song, Remember Me by Blue Boy. Very, very nice tune, that one. So is that something you sort of, that's on the way to the game? Um, yeah, yeah. Again, on the way to the game, mm-hmm. I can see this happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, this song has ran, ran in the family for quite a while. I, old mate, Christoph Blitzarv, the eldest brother, loves this song too. Um, and then thirdly, very beautiful summer tune that will get you excited no matter what, Teenage Crime by Adrian Lux. Okay. You know what? Me don't sleep when the sun goes down. Yeah, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> that feels like a leaving Townsville after a great win. Absolutely. Yes. Vibe? A perfect vibe. Yes, exactly yep. right. Um, uplifting, happy, relaxes you at the same Palm time. Trees. Beautiful. And that's Sarah Bear's songs. Sarah, wait, what are we going to call this segment? Sarah Bear's Spotty? Sarah Bear's Spotty songs. Sarah Bear's Spotty. Sarah Bear's Spotty songs. Coming up next week, Arlo Blitzar's top three. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could make that a segment. Can you imagine? Arlo Blitzar's, just get him to Songs call in. Bluey and No, so Arlo, sorry, going to off track here. Arlo Blitzar's is a little techno boy. Oh. Thanks to Chris and I. Yeah, you know, it doesn't shock me. He, and Johnny Cash as well. Very hot, yeah. But he comes up to me and he's like, can you play Diplo? He loves this song called Tushunga by Diplo. It's a live set. Yep. This is great. We've got to get an edit for Arlo Blitzarves. <laughs> he was the mascot of the hub two seasons ago. Um, now, you're not the only Blitzarves that makes the headlines, and we talked about pretty much every other member of the family last week, but not a member of the Blitzarves family who's gone viral. No, we have a viral Blitzarves member, probably the best Blitzarves member as well, but Mama B. Uh, what has she done? Look, she plays in this league in Geelong, walking basketball, and I'm going to throw Geelong under the bus a little bit. It's very physical and it's not always walking either. They break the rules a little bit. But Karen loves it. Um, comes out with a, you know, textbook little shimmy turnaround shot fake. I'm sure there's footage of it. Um, and, yeah, decided to go viral. Bleacher Report, I think she's up to like 200,000 views or something, maybe oh more. Oh, my God. So take us through, describe to us what she's doing in this vision. She is. She's not doing the Blitzarves jumper, is she? She's doing the 
patented Blitzard's turnaround jumper that Mama B actually created she herself created. when she played in WNBL. Um, and and basically she saw she saw the guy guarding her and thought, I can take you down here, backed him in a little bit, hit him up with a shimmy, little turnaround fade right in his face. And you know what? He gave her a high five. She took him downtown. And, of course, Karen Blitzab's the inaugural MVP of the WNBL. Yes, she is. She is. Uh, won it for the first three seasons, I think it was. Surely we'll have to get her into co-host. I'm sure she You've would. You've never won an MVP. <laughs> Why am I sitting Why on this you, couch? You, I've never done anything great. You're, you're the I wish. just like to ramp my mouth a little bit. I ordered Karen Blitz Arms and I got you the wish version. <laughs> the, wish version. <laughs> the wish Blitz Arms right here. <laughs> Mama B gone viral as she deserves. We'll have to get her on the show at some stage to make her second appearance. Oh, she would love that. We would love that. Blinky, it's been so fun. Have a safe trip to Townsville, of course, you play the fire Wednesday night on ESPN. What's meant to be a doubleheader for you guys this weekend playing Bendigo, but that game has been rescheduled to the 11th of Feb. So Bendigo will sit pretty at the top of the ladder for this weekend, watching all the Signet WNBL action. And then you guys have a bit of a um, break between games. Absolutely. A couple of weekends off, which I'll cherish deeply. And then we're firing after that. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks, Blicky. Good luck in Townsville. Have a safe trip. I'll see you there. And everyone, enjoy a big round to come of the Signet WNBL. Thanks, Megzi, for having me. You Always a pleasure, never at all. <laughs>